Okay, so uh, I just wanted to lay a few things out there, and we'll see if, if people have some discussion on, on a few points. Um, and uh, I learned the other day that you could have all your hair fall out and still be mid-career, and, and I still have all my hair. And I'm actually not quite 15 years post-PhD, so I think I can still consider myself young, although my kids keep aging and that makes it more difficult. Um, and in the 14 years that I've been post-PhD, I've spent about eight of them in one way or another editing. And so I think I, I although certainly there are individuals here who have a lot more experience in this than I do, um, I think I've had so far at least uh, my share of, of experience. Maybe if my students know a little bit more about exactly how much time it has some, sometimes taken, I think that it sometimes is too much experience. But, um, but that's a little bit of what we'll, we'll talk about. Um, I, I think that when I look at the editing system, and part of this has to do with the whole peer review system, but I'm gonna concentrate a little bit on from the perspective of, of an editor, and I do my share of reviewing as well in editorial boards for other journals, but we certainly have some challenges. Um, we have an expanding number of journals, especially empirical journals, and, and Marilyn was, was talking about that. They all need editors. Uh, we have an ever-increasing number of submissions, and we can certainly have conversations about um, how that comes about and what some of the causes are for the ever-increasing numbers uh, at especially our top journals, but all these other journals are still getting papers as well. But even though we have each of those, we have a relatively stable, I'd say, um, number of qualified editors and reviewers. It doesn't all add up, right? And so one of the results, and maybe not the only result, but I, I think there is a sense in which it's hard to get and keep good quality editors. We have a set of people that we'd like to go back to and say, gee, it would be great if that person was still editing. Um, and as has been foreshadowed already, a lot of the times I think people say, well, I, I've done my duty, and they have. And, and that, I think, does pose a problem for us as, uh, as a science, um, because all of these journals need editing, right? And, of course, all those editors need reviewers, um, at least maybe one or two. Um, so wh why is it? And, and I think when I look at it, at least, I'm, I'm not an IO psychologist, but, it, but some of my colleagues, when they look at it, I think that they would, would say that the current model is actually a pretty good recipe for burnout. Um, it's, you know, we, we have um, two to four year terms as an associate editor, often four to six as an editor. Um, actually, those are, uh, would be true for our society journals, for uh, just a, a journal that is uh, um, put together by the publisher. It may be much longer, um, but, but maybe not. It, it's a little more variable there. Um, we are, I believe, handling way too many papers. Um, Often for an editor, it and I said 100 plus plus because a lot of times 100 comes nowhere close to what our editors are doing um, per year. Even for an associate editor, it may very well be 60 to 80 papers a year. Now, I, actually, I haven't handled that many. When I was an associate for, for Jerry at PSPB, we were handling about 50, and that was plenty. I don't know what I would have done with 60 or 80. Um, I actually started, maybe not wisely, but started editing for Jerry before I had tenure and handling 50 papers a year. I can, I can imagine 80 or however many. Um, we often have relatively little support, especially on the university side, um, especially for associate editorships. There are lots of places where you get little or no course relief and those kinds of things. Um, or even uh, on the compensation side, often little or, or no compensation, whether that be from a publisher, from a society, whatever the case may be. Um, and, and so, as I'll talk about in a little bit, I mean, we, we do a lot of this out of a sense of duty or, or, or for some other unknown reasons. Maybe we need to know more about what some of those reasons are. Um, and, and to boot, um, especially if one is editing in one of our top journals, um, and if, like I do, um, one has some qualms about publishing in the journal while you're editing there, um, then that can actually have an impact on maybe not so much your own uh, career as much as your students' careers. Um, and as our students need more and more publications, and things like a JPSP publication makes a big difference 
um, maybe now even you'd say a psych science publication, but would make a big difference for our students. But if you're editing there and have qualms about publishing there while you're editing there, that has an impact. Um, and uh, in the end, this recipe, not only are we, do we put all of this on top of everything else we do, but it really does, um, at least in my experience, take away from my own and my students' productivity. Um, I think our most precious qu uh, quantity that we have is our time. And we put a lot of time into these efforts. Um, at least ideally, to do it right, I think we put a lot of time into those efforts. Um, and, and that makes it difficult to, in the long term, have someone that is routinely a part of this process rather than feeling like, I did my time. So what are some of the results of, of that system as we have it? Well, you know, we, now I, I certainly I don't want to imply that we do not have people that are consistently a part of this system. We certainly do. And it's a darn good thing that we do. Um, but I think that there are certainly issues that we have in terms of having really good quality editors, um, perhaps for very long periods of time, not re-entering the system and, and, and oftentimes not entering it multiple times as we really need with that limited number of really good people to handle the ever-increasing volume that we have because they feel like they've done their duty. And, and they have, if we look at the kind of uh, of load that they carried while they carried it. And the other kind of thing that can happen, although we certainly hope that it doesn't, but we all have stories, mostly from the author side of things, but, but I think that actually people do end up uh, experiencing some satisficing to try to handle the load because they don't want to give up on a research career. They can't, when you have a student for, for five, six years and you're editing for most of that time, you cannot. Um, set aside what they're doing. It's their career that you're messing with when you do. And so I think that people do handle that system in a way that sometimes ends up being taking shortcuts. You know, you, we've probably all received uh, decision letters that look kind of like a form letter where, you know, it, it has, you know, plug in your, your criticisms here, but the body is all the same and, and, and uh, maybe it's just saying, well, the reviewers had these issues, deal with them. Right? And there wasn't a lot of a decision um, other than, well, you didn't satisfy the reviewers. Um, and both of those, I think, you know, certainly we like to say, oh, so-and-so you know, took this approach. But I think as social psychologists, at least uh, for many of us as social psychologists, I think we also have to look at the situation in which the person's been placed and what those constraints do to how they have to deal with the situation. And I think that that is part of the reason for some of that satisficing. And, and also that can, can result in things like saying, well, the reviewers know more about you know, the specialization that we talked about a little bit earlier, where they'll say, well, the reviewers know more about this than I do, and I don't have the time to go learn it myself, so you're gonna have to satisfy what they have to say, or they don't like it, and that's, that's where I'm gonna have to stay with it. And maybe that was the right decision, and maybe it wasn't. But we're often dissatisfied from the author point of view when that's what we hear back. So, you know, exactly why we edit, I, I don't know. I mean, I think we do have a sense in which we edit because we feel like, well, I use the system and I have some responsibility to then be a positive part of the system. I think there's a, a sense of duty um, or pro-field motives in some way to say, you know, I want to support the field and I, I know that to support it and for it to work, it, it requires this kind of effort um, of certain individuals for certain amounts of time. But will these be enough to sustain, to sustain the system as we have these ever-increasing numbers of journals and submissions, et cetera? And I, 